Yeah, this is Psalm 90. And I'll just read a portion of it. So 91 is good, but 90 was the one that, that I was thinking about. Our prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. And I stop right there because uh, when we think about how, uh, as Moses is saying, God has been not only been around since there was time, uh, and he says that he's been our uh, protection, our provider, uh, our shield, our fortress, and all the other things, the words that the Psalms use to, to describe God. But I like the personal pronoun. You know, it, it's, he's ours. And, and so that means that no matter what we go through, whatever we face, he's with us. Uh, the Bible says he is slow to anger and quick to forgive. He delights in forgiving us and he delights in, in taking care of us. And so to, to ask a question, who wouldn't serve a God like that? Um, and, and particularly given the year that we've been facing, 2020 has been a, a challenging year. Uh, there was a time when my son-in-law was diagnosed with throat cancer and he was going through the, the treatments and all of that. And we got a chance to spend some time with him um, and to see him struggle uh, with the, the physical challenges. And I'm sure there was some, some mental and emotional challenges there as well. And uh, his faith never wavered. And that was encouraging. Um, even even the little ones, you know, they, they don't fully understand it, but they were there and they were being an encouragement. And and it just goes back to what I was saying about no matter what we go through, God is still there. We don't understand it, we don't like it, but he's still there. Uh, my nephew who was killed in a car accident, you know, we, we this, this has never happened to us before. The physical challenges that Janice is going through with the medical issues and all of that, um, my having been exposed to COVID to the point I had to get uh, tested twice and thank God both times came out negative but it forced me to work from home and anybody who knows me know I do not like working from home um, and and um, the, 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 the close proximity of, of the people that we know who have been victimized by the virus uh, just found out today that one of my sisters in law tested positive for it. Um, what's encouraging is God treating us way better than we deserve. Um, his, his, you know, the, the, the Psalms and the Bible talks about his, his mercy, his loving kindness, his everlasting, the grace that he extends to us, um, that way much more than we deserve. And I thank God for not giving me what I deserve. And um, so with all of the challenges that we faced in 2020, um, I have been guilty of saying that this has been a terrible year. <laughs> but, but as I look back on it, it's been a good year because this has been a time that God has, has shown himself in a way that I have not seen before. I, I can say in the past, yeah, God is faithful because I know that from my head, I know that from scripture. I know he's faithful because I can see it and I feel it in my heart and I see it every day. I've seen it time and time again over this, this year. Uh, and so I'm encouraged. Um, I'm encouraged that as he brought us through this challenging year 2020, he'll get us through 2021 and on up until the time, all the other years until he decides it's time for us to go home. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm just thanking God and I'm praising him. Uh, I'm still going to whine in between, <laughs> but my heavenly father is, is strong enough and wise enough to handle all my sniveling. And he still says, I love you, my child. I got you. We're going to get through it. And so I think praise be to God to that. Um, I'll close with a word of prayer. Father, I am. First of all, I confess that I, I, I whine way too much. Um, sometimes in my flesh, I look at um, what I don't have. I look at what the situation is not. 
rather than looking at what is. And the fact is that you have been our dwelling place through all generations. The fact is, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are still God. No matter what you allow, no matter what goes on in the world, you are still on the throne. You are still sovereign. And God, you are still loving. You're still all powerful. And for that, we thank you. Thank you for just being God. Thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercy. Thank you for your forgiveness. When we are stiff necked and stubborn, when we're cowardice, when we speak up, when we should shut up, all those times when we sin by, by commission and omission. God, we're sorry. And we just pray, ask for and receive and thank you for your forgiveness. All those times when we didn't acknowledge your hand in 2020. Thank you for them. Thank you for all those things that we took for granted. All the things that we still take for granted. And we look forward to a, a wonderful 2021. A time when, as you reveal more and more of yourself, that we become more mature and we can recognize that and praise you all the better. I pray for my second Calvary family, God. You know my heart and you know how much I miss my family. But I pray even in this time of physical separation that you bless them beyond measure. While we may be physically separated, God, help us to get closer spiritually. Help us to, to truly feel one another's anxieties and bear one another's burdens and, and share all of our joys. Help us to become one. Help somebody to who who didn't doesn't know you, God, who didn't acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. Help them to, to realize that you are the only way, truth, and life. And help somebody, save somebody in 2020, God. And and Lord, I pray for my, my biological family. I continue to, to lift them up. I pray for those who are blessed but don't know that they're blessed. And we just look forward to rejoicing with one another, with praising you, and just having a wonderful time in 2021. And so now we thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory and honor in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. Amen.
Deacon Henson. Uh, I'll read the scripture, uh, Ephesians 3, um, 20 and 21. And it says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. I also began to start telling you, telling you about my 2020, ha <laughs> 2020, what a change in life. Uh, 2020 started for us, me and my wife is gonna be, it will be our 60th birthday. We'll be turning 60 in the year of 2020. And we had big plans. We had started out the year with uh, going on a cruise with my uh, son and daughter. And we were just going to start the year off with that. And, and matter of fact, we did that. We did that. We went 
in January, and they surprised us. As a matter of fact, they surprised us with a bunch of our friends coming on the cruise with us. And then we went on and also had plans for to go on another cruise in December to Australia. We were going to go on a 10-day cruise to Australia. All this to celebrate our 60th birthday. And then before you know it, here come March. And what happened? COVID. COVID-19 hits in and boy, that just turned the whole lifestyle around. But you know, we just kept on moving on, pressing on. As I was going through COVID, which was a difficult time for everybody, including myself, it started with me that I had to pick up my father from Florida uh, in May, and we had to pick him up because I have to be a caregiver for him for six months. So during that time, where I had my dad during the COVID time, he ended up going to the hospital twice for UTI. That's a urinary infection. And this is a guy that's 88 years old. So therefore, both of those times was very scary moment for me. Um, so we had to take him to the hospital. And uh, but it, everything went on pretty good with that. I also during that this COVID time, I had to assist my wife and my mother in law, uh, Ms. Ruth Gold, with the uh, assistance of her father. Her father was going through a lot of illness uh, during this time, and I had to assist them with uh, the care of the father when he was going to a nursing home, going to the hospital. But un unfortunate, during this time, he ended up um, passing away. However, it had nothing to do with COVID, uh, just natural causes and uh, with age. Um, so that was another dilemma during this COVID time. And as I moved along after that, you know, I ended up taking my father back home um, and then got him back to Florida. And then when I came back, I had to deal with my wife. My wife had a knee replacement. So there again, there I'm another caregiver all over again. During the COVID time, or there was some trying times, I'm telling you. But I kept on pushing, I kept on pushing. And she had a knee replacement. And I had to take care of her during that knee replacement time. And, you know, we just, everything just, oh, it just seemed like it was going to be something else. I mean, before, during that time, at the same time, maybe about a week after, maybe two weeks after my wife had an operation, I ended up having a flood in my house. We one of the pipe burst in the house and it flooded one of the bedrooms, the whole bedroom. And, and wow, I, I didn't know what to do. I mean, there are another situation. But, you know, through it all, you know, I found out that God is still in control. You know, he kept me. I went to him and I prayed to him during this time. I said, Lord, I can't do this by myself. The pipes burst. My, I have to take care of my wife, dealing with my dad when he was in the hospital. But you know what? God came through for me. God was there for me at all times. He kept me up. You know, it's just surprising and as we come to the close of the end of this year, I find that God has been with me, even though I didn't think he was, but he was, because he kept me, he kept my family. I mean, everybody is healthy. Nobody got sick in my family. I don't know anybody that got the COVID, when I mean friends and family members, uh, he kept me through, even, even my church members. I've talked to them, calling them and checked with them, and they've been good and, and no no issue with COVID. I think also what, what this, lessons it brought to me when it brought me closer to god it, it, it gave me a better closer relationship with god um he, he made me understand if i just focus on him and keep him in my prayers and keep focus on him that he will deliver and he will deliver for all of us and i just come to a conclusion that you know after it all has been said and done my wife is doing a lot better she's recovering uh, my house is getting fixed. I pray to the Lord to, you know, give me the right direction to, to deal with that because I wasn't used to this pipe because the pipe, it was in the slab of my concrete of my house. I had to dig up the slab and to get to the pipe. So the Lord made sure, you know, he had the right people in place, plumbers and all that. So that's another thing. The Lord just showed me again, I got you. Just hang in there. Just hang in there. So I learned from all this time of this COVID that if I just trust in the Lord, keep my eyes on him and just allow him to do what he's going to do, he will come through for us. And you know what? I think 
2021, we're going to have a better year. A better year. And all I can say is just continue to trust in the Lord because he has come through for me. All that I told you about earlier, but in the long run, everybody's happy, everybody's safe, and everybody's loved. And I thank God because it's all because of him. I give him all the glory and all the love for taking care of me and my family and all around me. So at this time, I'd like to just uh, close this out in a little prayer. So if you just bow heads with me and I'll just give you a little prayer. Lord, I just want to thank you for all that you have given me this 2020 year. Lord, even though with time that I thought I wasn't going to make it, times when I thought it was really difficult and I didn't know how I was making it. But Lord, I want to thank you for just stepping in and doing what you said you would do as long as we just trust in you and believe in you and allow you to do what you say you would do. Thank you for all that you've given us, Lord. Thank you for all that you've given me, Lord, and my family. I pray that you continue to bless us and keep us, Lord. And most of all, Lord, for 2021, I just pray that you just show your people that you will be stepping in on time. Maybe not our time, but it will be your time. Thank you for all that you've given us, Lord, and thank you all that you bless us with. And I give you all the glory and the praise in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
this scripture is Psalm 100 and it is reads thus make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing know ye that the Lord he is God it is he that has made us and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name for the lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations okay all right 2020, wow. Like so many others, 2020 has been a year of trials and testing. Most of the plans that I had for 2020 had to be abandoned because most of them involved traveling and being with other large groups of people. To say the least, I have been disappointed but the fact remains that I am still here and in reasonably good health and looking forward to a new year my family has experienced some health issues but all of those have been resolved and everyone has recovered or is improving um, and on the way to wellness. Being at home so much has given me time to reflect on how I have used my time in the past. And I am working on making some needed changes, most specifically my time spent in study and prayer and also looking at television. Wow, everybody thinks that this is the perfect time to look at television. I think that I have found that um, it has kind of sort of begun to um, soften my brain. And so <laughs> I am really working on eliminating some of the television watching. <clears throat> For me, 2020 has brought to light many of the disparities in our country and the need for change in race relations, police interactions in our communities, and the way our political process affects all of our lives. I have spent a number of times crying as I have seen these issues arise on the television. I have personally refused to allow the sad state of our nation to depress me. I just keep praying that we will be able to address and overcome these issues in 2021. I will be happy for 2020 to end and pray that we will have a better 2021. my prayer dear heavenly father you are the great i am and the one who brings peace love and joy to our lives i thank you for this day i thank you for being able to see and hear this morning i thank you for being a forgiving and understanding god you have done so much for me and you keep on blessing me I thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to take away the sins of the world. I thank you, Father, for all you have done and all you will do in our lives. I thank you for helping me to develop patience in this time of COVID. I thank you for my health and strength. I thank you for my Second Calvary Church family. I thank you for my faith that 
2021 will be filled with blessings for your people. And most of all, I thank you for your love. Amen.
Moving on, moving on is really a theme that's been on my mind for a while now. And that's really what I'm going to be preaching on today. I'm going to be going from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. And as I talk about this section of moving on, even just throughout life, the theme of moving on is just kind of there. When you think about it, we're hoping to move on from this pandemic, hopefully from help from the vaccine, hopefully from help with the social distancing that we've been doing, hopefully from help of everybody doing their due diligence and wearing masks and whatever we need to do to help calm this thing down. We, as you've seen, we've just had a new president elected. So now we're going to be moving on from the Trump administration into the Biden administration. Um, I'm hoping that we can move on from some of the divisive wounds that this nation has seen and that we can start to see some type of healing. So moving on is really a theme that's been on my heart. Even in my life, I feel like there's things that I'm, it's time for me to move on from. And I feel like with everybody, it's a time to move on. This is a time of shifting. I feel like God is pushing us into something new. God is pushing us into a, di a different chapter. So I'm going to go ahead and read the text. As I said, I'm going from Philippians chapter 3, starting from verse 12. And Paul writes, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward, forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now, when he talks about that, not that I've already made it my own, in the previous verses, he talks about knowing Christ and the power of his resurrection and sharing in the things that Christ shared in and sharing in the resurrection that Christ has shared in. He's thinking about that. Those are the things that he's thinking about, but he says, not that I've made it my own. He's realizing that he hasn't gotten there yet. Think about that. That brings me to my first point. What I want to, what I, for this new year, what I want to get to you is don't be complacent. Don't be complacent in your faith. Don't be complacent in your walk with Christ. So let's look at this. We all know Paul, at least I hope we do. Paul, saved and sanctified. He's filled with the Holy Spirit and he's a great missionary, probably the greatest missionary there was. Church planner. He brought the gospel all around the world. He trained a bunch of ministers during his time. He was a scholar, and he was commissioned by Jesus Christ himself to spread the gospel around the known world. Now, when we look at Paul, we see someone who is just basically ultra saved, ultra filled with the spirit. It's really some the things that he's done and the way he was so in tune with the spirit. We look at him. And we're like, man, we can't really live up to that. We can't we can't be Paul. That's that. Those are standards that I can't reach. But even as Paul himself was looking at his own life and his own spiritual walk, he was not satisfied with his current condition. Paul knew that he had to continually press on in his faith walk. Paul knew that he had more work to do. Paul knew that when it comes to your faith, your Christian walk, you can't be complacent about your current situation. He knew that there was plenty of room for improvement within his own walk. Paul knew that there was more that was required of him, and he knew that his relationship with Jesus could be even stronger than what it was at that point. Paul knew that. Think about that. If Paul realized that he had work to do, he could make his relationship with Christ better. He could do better than what he was doing. What about us? Now, if Paul wasn't satisfied with his current spiritual state, if Paul didn't want to be complacent with that, I mean... What about us? Should we be satisfied either? For us to be satisfied with our current spiritual state would say one of two things. One, we think that we're perfect and we don't have any room for improvement. Or two, we don't want to improve our relationship with Christ. We don't want to take the necessary steps and we don't want to read his word. We don't want to do the things to build that relationship. So what does that say about us if we fall into one of these two categories? So if you think that you're perfect, then you're only fooling yourself. There is none who's perfect. Only one who's perfect is God. And I can guarantee you right now, if you say that you're perfect, God will call you a liar right here and right now because you're not. 
I'm not. We all got things on us. We all done did some dirt. We all have sinned. So nobody here is perfect. We all still commit sin. Nobody's perfect. We all have room for improvement. So if you say that you don't want to improve your relationship with Christ, and if that's where you fall, then I would say right now that you really need to re-examine your faith. Go back to see if you're really saved. Go back to see how much you truly love Jesus. Because if you don't want to improve your relationship with him, this man died for you. This man paved a way for you to be in, in tune with God, for you to have a relationship with God. He's the one who paid the price for your sins. He's the one who took the price, who died on a cross, took that punishment, even though he didn't deserve it, so that you don't have to go through it. And if you don't want to build a relationship with him, I mean, like I said, I would really examine your faith. Go back, take a look in the mirror to see if you can really call yourself a Christian. So here, that's the first thing. Don't be complacent in your walk. Don't be complacent about where you are spiritually right now. You may feel like everything's well and good, but things can get better. Trust me, there is always room for improvement. Don't be satisfied about your current spiritual state, but continue to build on it and continue to move forward. Continue to press forward, but be warned that it is very difficult to move forward if you are still living in the past. So that brings us to point number two. Let the past stay in the past. I repeat, let the past stay in the past. There's a reason for that. We can't dwell on the past. We can't always be looking back. You cannot drive a car continuously looking in the rearview mirror. There's a reason your, your front windshield is bigger than your rearview mirror because it's more important to be looking forward than to be looking backward. Paul realized this. Paul realized that God had more in store for him. And because of that, he knew that he had to continue to move on, even from all the great things that he'd already accomplished, even from all the building of the kingdom that he had already done. The race was not complete. He had to continue to move on. He had more work to do. So I can't sit here and, and, and be complacent with the things that I've done. I'm still here. I'm still breathing. So I still have work to do. I can't be satisfied with everything that I've already done because I still have more than I can do. Now, in verse 13, Paul says, one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on. Think about that verse. He says, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. Paul realized that in order to move forward to the things that lie ahead of him, he had to forget about the things that lie behind him. And that doesn't mean you just, hey, forget about it. It's not worth nothing. No, the things that he did were great. He may have some great accomplishments, but the work wasn't finished. He couldn't just sit there and be satisfied with, with what he did because he knew that he still had work to do. And just like Paul, we need to realize that while we are still here, God still has more in store for us. There are times when God wants to move us into the next phase of our Christian walk. There are times when God wants to move us into the next chapter of our lives. Sometimes God wants us to transition from one thing into another thing. Look at us right now. We're about to transition from 2020 into 2021. Life is like nature. Life really follows the laws of nature if you really think about it. What happens in the natural a lot of times is the same thing that happens in the spiritual sense. Let's think about it. With, right now it's winter, but when winter is over, what do we do? We put up our heavy coats, we put up the sweaters, we put up our beanies and we put up our Ugg boots and all the other winter gear that we wear. We put up our long johns and all that. We put up our thick fuzzy socks and we make room for different things. We start taking out our lighter jackets we start taking out our t-shirts and our short sleeves and our polo shirts and those. We take out our shorts and women will take out their dresses and people start bringing it, trading in their winter boots for flip flops because the springtime requires different clothes than the summertime. You don't want to be caught up in 85 degree weather wearing a sweater. I guarantee you don't want to do that. I can't do that. I'd be miserable. It's not going to work. 
you have to move on from your winter clothes and transition into your spring clothes. You got to get yourself ready for the next chapter. You have to get yourself ready for the next phase. You have to get yourself ready for the next season. You can't properly transition if you're living in the past. So what is it that you're holding on to that you need to let go of? Is it some guilt or shame over something that you've done? You can move on from it. Let it go. Are you regretting the decision that you made? It's time to let it go. Stop holding on to it. Is it a relationship that didn't work out? Not everything is going to work out in life. Not every relationship is going to work, but we got to move on. We can't be dwelling on that. Is it an opportunity that you've missed? Unfortunately, sometimes we do miss opportunities, but hey, you have to move on. You can't sit there and dwell on that missed opportunity or you're going to mix the, miss the next opportunity coming your way. You can't move into the future if you're still holding on to the past. It can't be done. You know, you can actually, I connect, anybody can actually do this. You can find some gospel. You can find some spiritual guidance, some spiritual tidbits, if you will, and some secular stuff. And going back, I think about a song by Outkast and Andre 3000 says, spaceships don't come equipped with a rear view mirror. So what I get from that is if you're shooting for the stars, if you win your spaceship shooting for the stars, aiming to be the best that you can be at, moving forward and to be the best that you can be, ain't no need for a rear view mirror. You don't need to be looking back. There's no point to looking back. You got to look forward. Forward is where your future is. You can't move into your future moving backward. When we walk, we look forward, not backward. There's a reason we don't backpedal everywhere, because we don't need to be looking into our past. So let the past stay in the past. These things are in the past. Let them stay there. We have a present and we have a future. Do what you got to do here in the present time to make room for your future. So let's remember that as we're going into 2021, let 2020 stay in 2020. We're ready for new things. God wants us to move on to new things. It is time for us to move on to new things. God is trying to push us into new things and new things are coming this year, but we can't move on into the new things if we're still stuck on the things that are behind us. We can't. Remember, let go of the past, let the, stay, let the past stay in the past. And my third point is this, whatever it is you do, however you live your life, whatever it is you do in your life, always live with a purpose. God is pushing all of us into a specific direction. God is going to push us all into different chapters of our own story. God's written the book and it's time to move on into the next chapter. 2021 is a different chapter than 2020. There are new things coming. I guarantee you that. Young people, some of y'all are getting ready to move into a new school, getting ready to go into college or a specific program maybe even the military. Some people are getting ready to transition into a new career. Some of you may be getting ready to enter a, a chapter of marriage, parenthood, or maybe some of you are getting ready to become grandparents. That's a new chapter in your life. Some people may be moving across the country to begin a whole new chapter of their life. They may have a new job opportunity, something they may be moving closer to family, maybe moving away from family. Who knows what this life has in store for you? God knows what this life has in store for you. I don't know, but for everybody, it's something different. Everybody has a different purpose to fulfill. Everybody does something different with their lives. But I believe right now that God is, you know, when we talk about, when we talk about people moving into different chapters, just look at our, how things are spiritually right now. Look at how we are right now. We have to worship virtually. Well, many of us choose to worship virtually. I know some churches are meeting back in the buildings, but I know right here at Second Calvary, we're still doing things virtually. I believe right now that God is building up workers for the gospel who are going to develop new means of sharing his word that are more adaptable to this new world that we're living in. Look at how we're doing things now. It's not the same as we were doing it a year ago, but the world continuously changes the world, we have to adapt to the changes of the world. And I believe that there are people who are developing things that will help us adapt to this new world. It's got to happen. So no matter what you're getting ready to move into in your life, make sure that you move with a purpose. You don't just go through life going through the motions. You can't do that. 
Otherwise, you, 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 your life is, li is pointless. You got to have a purpose. Your actions have to be a means to an end. You have to be working to fulfill something. Now think about this. As you're moving into whatever it is your life has for you, ask some questions for yourself. How are you being fulfilled in your life? How are you fulfilling the needs of others in your life? How are you helping people? Most importantly, how are you fulfilling God's purpose for your life? Do you even know what God's purpose for your life is? Have you spoken to God? Has he revealed this to you? Have you asked him to reveal this for you? And then whatever it is you're moving into, whether you are a teacher, whether you're a minister, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a, in some type of labor job, automobile, plumbing, whatever it is, accounting, whatever it is, how are you fulfilling God's purpose for your life? What are you doing to fulfill God's purpose for your life? Because God is the one who made you and God is the one who gives you purpose. So you need to figure out that purpose. These are some of the important questions that you need to ask yourself as you're moving from season to season in your life. There's different seasons. You're going to be doing different things. But whatever you're doing, you have to live with a purpose. Paul lived his life with a singular purpose. Notice that in the verse he says, there is one thing, one thing that I do, but one thing I do. So he had a singular purpose. Now, there were many different phases in his life, but in every phase, he was determined to fulfill his purpose. Paul's singular purpose was to fulfill his calling given to him by Jesus Christ. His singular purpose was to spread that gospel to the Gentile nations, to spread that gospel around. So whether Paul was home or whether he was away, whether he was in a synagogue or whether he was in the marketplace, whether he was with Jews or whether he was with Gentiles, whether he was free or whether he was in prison, Paul always pressed on toward fulfilling his calling given to him by Jesus Christ. That was Paul's purpose. Evangelism was his purpose. Spreading the gospel was his purpose. And no matter where he was in his life, you always saw him spreading the gospel because he knew that that was his purpose. So whatever your purpose is in here, here in this life, you need to make sure that you are fulfilling your purpose in whatever it is that you do. So what's your calling? What's your calling? What is the next phase in life that God wants you to move to? What's the next chapter in your story? Trust me, 2021 is going to bring some new chapters. You may enjoy some of them. Some of them may be a little more difficult. Some of them are going to bring some challenges. It's going to, 2021 is going to bring some new challenges that 2020 hasn't seen. But there's going to be some new chapters in your life. Are you ready for what God has in store for you? Are you ready to move on into the next phase of your life? The next phase of your relationship with God? Are you ready for that? So remember, as you move on, leave the past in the past. Let 2020 stay in 2020 so that we are properly ready for 2021. And always, always remember to live with a purpose. And as I close out today, as I said, I've been on the subject of moving on. That subject of moving on has been in my mind for a while now. And it actually had a song pretty much in my head. It's the song Moving On by Jonathan McReynolds. That song has been in my head. So as I get ready to close out, I actually leave the lyrics to this song as a blessing for you. So I say to you, may the things that are in your rear view not compare to the things that God will do in your life. I pray for many blessings. I pray for peace in this new chapter of your life in 2021 and beyond. May God bless you all. Amen.